but there's been a few events since last year to now that's happened that's set me back in some ways I'd like to apologize and retract the statement you cannot be wrong and strong I don't care if they're 8 stone, I don't care if they're 18 stone, I don't care if they can fight, I don't care if they're a milkman. I was put on this earth to fight, you know, I was never going to be a model, I ain't that pretty. Yeah, so I wasn't the best at school and criminality ain't my game, you know, just, I'd rather get my face punched in for a living. You know, you can't get on Google and say I want to buy some respect, some morals today, how much is it going to cost me? You've got to earn them. I've been a face for the Gypsy community since 2009. Uh, when Big Fat Gypsy Wedding come out and I've done a documentary every year ever since from then to now. So I've done my first year. So easily you can slip with one bad person round you, yeah, into, into a slipstream of, of disaster. So I've had it, been there, got the t-shirt. Everyone makes mistakes every day of their life. Yeah, it's about being a man, realizing them, yeah? And if you get knocked down, get back up, innit? You know, with, with everything in life. You don't know money today, but tomorrow you know you're gonna be fed. You just gotta keep going. I'm very grateful to be fighting BKFC, 20th of August, you know, historical event, Wembley Arena, and the Rhino is gonna do main tricks. This video is sponsored by Sinner Sauce, the best hot sauce in the UK, a proud sponsor of KRN TV. Please try it out, you won't be disappointed. Link in description. So guys, welcome back to Karen TV. Today, I'd like to be in Virginia Water with the man, the myth, the legend, one of the channel's most popular former guests, the Rhino, Tony Giles. Tony, how you doing, my friend? I'm all right. The Rhino, I'm mad. Ask mum and dad. And I have got a fight on the 20th of next month, which is August, BKFC. So get yourself a ticket, get yourself to Wembley Arena, historical event. Yeah, bare knuckle boxing. So it's just not like no normal backstreet bare knuckle boxing. This is high level. This is the best fighters of their sports get to fight on BKFC. So you see champion fight champion. You know, it's unbelievable. So how big the sport is growing. And I, I feel honored. Thank you very much to Dave Fieldman, Bobby Gunn, James Quinn, because they are in this sport, they have they have brung it to this level. If it wasn't for those people there and the knowledge that they have, then I wouldn't be fighting on it. And it is one of the fastest growing sports of today. So yeah, it's a massive opportunity for you, obviously, and Tony. It's isn't it? my birthday. I can cry if I want to. Cry if I want to. Oh, I need a bit of karaoke. Yeah, so happy birthday. <laughs> yes, obviously, it's uh, Tony's 38th mm. birthday today. So I uh, hope you had a good day, I Tony. I didn't want to tell everyone I was 38, but yes, I am 38 today. And um, as you get older, you get wiser. So, <sighs> the knowledge is built. So yes, about a year since we see you last time. How's the, the past year been, Tony? A whirlwind, really. So there's been uh, a few events in since last year to now that's happened that's pretty much set me back in some ways but opened doors for what I, what I was put on this earth to fight you know I was never going to be a model I ain't that pretty yeah so I wasn't the best at school and criminality ain't my game you know just I'd rather get my face punched in for a living at least then you know you come at home with, come home of the night time with a clean conscience spend the rest of your life watching your kids grow up you know so that's what i've always thought and that's what i've stuck to indeed so you've done it all in terms of the combat sport is you've done the kickboxing mma pro boxing and now it's obviously the so the last one um 
the bare knuckle fighting, so you must be super gypsy, excited for the opportunity. Yeah, in the gypsy culture, the people haven't. There's not one other fighter out there, professional in the gypsy culture that has done what I have done. Yeah, I haven't got the recognition for it now because people don't understand cage fighting, you know. So a lot of people they're just starting to get to terms with cage fighting. Never mind the level that I'm at now with bare knuckle boxing. They hear about, about bare knuckle boxing and they think bru brutality, they think savages, they think that you've got to be crazy to be getting in there. But bare knuckle boxing is one of the oldest from England. England was the country that it got invented in, you know? And then it went all around the world. And for centuries, for hundreds of years, that people have done bare knuckle boxing. It's just never been professional. There's never been a border control, and now, now there is. Dave Fieldman sprung it from America to Wembley Arena, and he has the Rhino. Uh, Michael Venom Page, Mike Perry, there's some really good fighters on there. Um, that Paige Velasco, she's a UFC Paige fighter. Vincent. Yeah, so it, yeah. So it's, it's brilliant, obviously, that they've got a traveling. Obviously, it's brilliant that you've managed gypsy. to get on Gypsy on the. Uh, it's brilliant and fitting, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, I'm. I'm honoured to be on this show, and people may think I'm crazy, you know. So I wouldn't blame them for it. But I have, like anyone else, I have a story. I have a pathway that I started from, and it's led me up to this moment here. So as I say, I do it for my kids, and I do it for my culture. I want my kids to look up for me. Uh, look, I want my kids to look up to me, and I want my culture to respect me. And that's uh, look, I've look, I've been a I've been a face for the gypsy community since 2009, uh, when Big Fat Gypsy Wedding come out, and I've done a documentary every year ever since from then to now. So I've done my fair share. The same as what another fighter, what I'd like to apologise and retract the statement because my last management team told me that because I knew that they did know each other and, uh, and I got told that uh, John Fury asked me to hype the fight up and he never so then I split with my management team over it because in the they don't understand in in our community in our culture yeah we stick together yeah and if uh, and if somebody if somebody's done wrong to you or your family then that's 99.9% .9 of the fights and is over that you know so it's not over what we uh, what we do as a sport so therefore yeah i got told that it would hype the fight and that they asked for me to do that and then when i found out that it wasn't that hurt that hurt me inside you know a bit because i put myself in their shoes and and they are leading figures in the gypsy community look what they've done you know tommy he's done the reality tv and he's doing the boxing so i've got maximum respect for him you know and old johnny's done it he's he's got the t-shirt and tyson he's a legend isn't he so and all the family are good people so for them to think that i've got on there and i've done it without them asking it is a liberty to begin with so i would be upset i would expect their apology so you cannot be wrong and strong now, I don't care if they're 8 stone, I don't care if they're 18 stone, I don't care if they can fight, I don't care if they're a milkman, whoever they are, you know. So, so that is the truth of it. You can't be wrong and strong, and when you're right, there's a fight, mentally, verbally, physically. Did I say verbally? Hey! Well, fair, <laughs> fair play to retract that. You didn't do it in a disrespectful yeah, way. In anyway, a disrespectful you, no, you didn't way. do it when you first did it. It wasn't a disrespectful call out, was that, it? But the, obviously, you were misinformed. You got rid of your management team. Mm. And, I um, went to Tyson's last fight. And I would have liked to bump into him and to talk to him. And it, obviously, he knows the ins and outs of the games. Of the rest of the rest of his family, they've been around it all their life, the same as us, you know. So, so for them, they understand probably that with my management team, who it was, they've got them to do that, you know. But still, for me as a person, you know, I, I wouldn't like it. So therefore, I understand a hundred percent. Yeah, if they watched it exactly how they'd be thinking about it you know and i don't want that especially for people that i i respect because they do what i do you know well fair play to you and um like and I, said, I wish them all the best good luck of course shout out to the furies all of them yes. john tyson there's only one um, tyson fury Huey, peter all of them they're um, a great family exactly they are a great family and you know what what they've done for the community yeah who else has done what they've done Yep. So, and I've got that much respect for him. And I, turning over from MMA, being a pro MMA and K1 fighter, into the pro boxing 
I just I seem to find that there's so many so many people this blowing smoke and and offering you the dream and and really and truly they have nothing to back it up with you know yeah. so uh, this goes out to everybody who's turned over as a pro boxer you know be very careful who you have manager yeah so you've got to do that research and you've got to be with people that you can trust and people that's got a very good name in it you know so and still watch them closely and as you can tell look i've got my solicitor at the back there everything nowadays yes everything nowadays has to be monitored yeah especially in profession because so easily so easily you can slip with one bad person round you yeah into into a slipstream of of disaster so i've had it been there got the t-shirt so my dad died 10 years ago god bless his soul he was only like 45 46 years of age so he was like him or my granddad would have been the only people on this earth that would have wanted the best for me unconditionally and without them being there i seem to have made a lot of mistakes in my life but listen everyone makes mistakes every day of their life yeah it's about being a man realizing them yeah and if you get knocked down get back up in it you know with with everything in life you don't know money today but tomorrow you know you're going to be fed you just got to keep going and i've been very positive to get here to where i'm at now you know so i don't think any different of myself now than what i did when i was a kid and i was starting out at it you know mm. but i've done this my whole life Indeed. i fought bare knuckle i fought for an hour i was 18 or 19 years of age just come back from staying with jimmy from down there seeing his mindset to be a pro fighter you know and always had it because my granddad pumped into me about being a uh, bare knuckle fighter you know so i had the brain had the heart had the fitness you know so then but having all those ingredients, unless you put it in the oven and you cook it, to see the end, to see the end of it, how it's going to look, you never know until you put it in that oven, you know? So anyone could have the ingredients. Get out there, fight with someone that's bigger and better than you, and this has got a lot better track record than you for an hour, and then you win that fight, go home that night if you ain't in A&E. Yeah, and then you understand what I'm saying. So not many people's done that. So the, the people who have done that, they understand what I'm saying. You know, that is fighting. That's that's fighting for that's fighting not for money. So you can go on holiday or you can buy a new car. That's fighting for your fighting for what you've been put on this earth to do. And that's to respect your eldest morals. You can't buy them. You know, you can't get on google and say i want to buy some respect some morals today how much is it going to cost me you've got to earn them mm. you know and i believe that the all the time that i've been doing this is to, it is to earn the respect what i have today you know so i'm very grateful to be fighting bkfc 20th of august you know historical event wembley arena and the rhino is going to do matrix and that is that is one thing that i can promise you Dedicate the fight to little Jimmy Lee Vinson, you know, Rest Jimmy's good, but his dad, who, who is a legend himself, ex-pro boxer that's fought for world titles, British titles, and he's, uh, yeah, he has done everything, got the t-shirt, you know, and, and he's been there from the beginning, right the way to today, and he's still in my corner today, so God bless his little boy, you know, and uh, uh, his little boy was my friend, you know, as well as his dad was. I was, when I was living with GME, when I was 17 years of age, his little boy used to sit with me every day. We used to laugh. We had no worries in the world. And his dad used to take me to work. You know, they, they're they my family, you know, and they've been, and he's always fueled my fire to know that I want my kids to look at me the same way as he used to look at his dad, you know? So that's what I think about in a changing room before a fight. I do this for my kids, you yeah. know? And if I can do this, to make my kids love and respect me, you know, as well as give them a good future, then, I, then I'm a winner. Cool. Um, and so talk to me about how the training camp's gone. Obviously, you said you mentioned you're training with Jimmy, obviously someone who knows... Academy, know. Gary Dawson, Academy Boxing. Uh, I've done a fair bit with him down there. He's been with me for a while. So, as I say, I usually do a bit more of a crazy build-up to... Um, a lot of my fights, but this don't need no building up. This is um, this is a new sport that's going to take over completely. This is a warrior's platform. 
And who are you fighting, Tom? David Brown. He's had 50 MMA fights. He's had. He's a European level bare knuckle fighter, professional. So I've gone straight in at the deep end. Straight in at the deep end. I've seen him do five second knockouts. Well, fair play to you. I don't think there's any easy fights on this the platform. And not show you on, is well, it? He, on, an, on, on any other fighter would want to fight somebody at their level, you know. So I'm going straight in at a European level. So just just to prove to the whole world. Yeah, that this is what rhinos do best. You know, this thick skin is ready for that realm ring. Indeed, and you signed a free fight contract. Free you, fight so I'd like contract. To congratulate you for that time. Yes, and I'm telling everybody this now because everybody who knows about gypsies, they know. Come to me and I'll tell you fortune. Yeah, exactly. All right, we're very spiritual beings, and I've got three fights. And they've just signed a fighter from Thailand. Everyone knows who he is. He's supposed to be one of the most deadliest men in the world. I'm going to fight on the 20th. The fight after that, or maybe my third fight, whichever one I can. Let's have it. No problem. If I'm in, if I'm in any sport, like when I was at, when I was fighting MMA and K1, I fought the best. I fought Big Ben Smith, got him three stone away and weight, six times world champion. Yeah. Do you, you know Big Ben Smith? Of course. Exactly. Who hasn't he fought? Yeah. Who, would you get in there with Big Ben Smith? Definitely not. Definitely not. No. I walked in there. Yeah. And I was still there at the last bell. Um, Alex Reid. Look, Alex Reid. He just come off a fight with Tom Con Watson. Nobody would fight him. Nobody would fight him. The promoter said everybody, they want to say that they're fighting, but they're not going to fight him. I need somebody who's going to fight him that is going to turn up. And... Fair play, you know. So, so, yeah. So every every level of of every sport that I have been, I've been in, I've went straight to the top. You know, I may not have succeeded the first time, but I made it in the end. And this is what's going to happen with this. So yeah, incredible. Um, obviously, opportunity you've got ahead of you then, Tone. And fair play to yourself, putting yourself in this position and training hard. And obviously, you must be super excited. Talk to me about how the fight's going to go then on the night. But everybody knows that I build a fight up. I'm I am a crazy character, yeah. But I don't have to build this fight up. This fight is going to be historical because, listen, when we walk into there, the, once someone's getting knocked out, you know, stand and bang, yeah, I'm prepared, all right. And if the better man wins on the night, yeah, the better man wins, all right. We're all champions for walking in there. But as the Lord is my witness, yeah. I've got three fights. I will win all these three fights, yes. I will be a champion, all right? You're hearing it now. Yeah, I'm 38 years of age today. The Rhino, yeah. I have broke records since I've started in the professional leagues. Who else do you know as a gypsy has done what I've done? MMA K1. Who's walked into them cage? Who's who's looked into the dark and not, uh, 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 and not fell over? I got to the end of that pathway. And I'm still here now. Of course, fair play to you. You've been um, setting the path, haven't you, the whole way? I'm the bottom now, here. And so do you obviously feel like, obviously you talk about the way in previous interviews that your granddad raised, do you feel like you've been bred for this, this is the perfect Listen, I've done can... reality TV and I've talked enough about myself since yeah, 2009. You know, better not yeah, fight it in terms of the culture, since 2009, the way Since 2009, that's when I started doing documentaries and letting people know, not just about my life, about the culture. And, and you know what, I feel like I've done a good job at it. But all of that out the window now, yeah, I'm walking in to a round ring. I know that sounds crazy, but you've got to see it. I'm walking to a round ring, yeah, and I'm going in there to win. I'm going in there to do Matrix, and I guarantee that after the fight on the 20th of August at Wembley Arena, you're going to wake up the next morning after watching it and say, did you see what that guy done last night? Yeah, I'm bringing a new level. Well, I can't wait to see it, Tom. Oh, I can't I've been wait doing to see a lot it. Of meditating lately. Yeah, getting your mind yeah. in the right sort of place, really. Yeah. yeah, but I am ready mentally, you know, and I've got my, I've got my corner. You, the other day when I started and I got this fight, I was 93 kilos. Um, you see me weigh myself earlier on, 81.6 in a few weeks. I've done this my whole life. I've been pro and I've had, and I've had fights coming up for 12, 13 years. That, 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 yeah, 
Yeah, for the last 12 or 13 years, I've had fights coming up all the time, basically. So I've always constantly, my body's prepared. And I have finally, I've had a rest for the last few months before I took this fight to let all my injuries heal. Yeah, to have a break, take myself away from it. You know, all the social media, all the people, you know, like, and just concentrate and go back to where it started. You know, and I've done all of this for a good reason. And I believe that the whole world has not seen what I'm capable of. And this is the platform now to show the world these Turkish teeth. Yeah, of course, well, we look forward to seeing it obviously in a few weeks' time. And so, like you say, your mind's in the right state, your body's right. Yeah. All the time away from social media, probably done the mind some good, like you say, innit? It's no good for all this social media stuff for anyone. No, not at all. Not at all. And as I say, you get a lot of trolls on there, you get a lot of people that try and mentally bully you on there, you get a lot of people that are on there, they say, just try, is out with manipulative intentions, you know, for you. So, you've got to be very careful on there, especially whatever profession you do. So, indeed. Well, like I said, obviously, I'm wishing you the best of luck on the night. And for anyone, obviously, guys, go down there and watch it. For anyone who can't get down there, get onto the BKFC, get on their website, sign up for As it. As I say again, I'd like to thank Dave Fieldman, Andy Blackwell, uh, Bobby Gunn, legend, James Quinn McDonough, legend. You see, so these are the people. Jimmy Vincent, legend, love him. And um, also, I'd like to say. A big, I love you too, and all your family, and always have done, and he has helped all the way along, just by always pointing me in the right direction, that's Big Alfie Best. Yeah, fair play, shout out to Alfie Best, shout and his boy, the Big pro Alfie proper, proper gentleman. And, uh... It seems to be that every point in my life, I've been at the darker, so I, I've had a phone call out of nowhere, and he sort of swung everything back, back around, just with his positive mindset, you know? He's got so the knowledge, I'm, yeah, yeah, well... Positive, he is a legend. He is a legend. So I should I should be every time I do an interview saying thank you because if it wasn't for his knowledge, I probably wouldn't be here today. You know, he sponsored the fight against Alex Reed at, at, um, back in 2014. You know, nobody had that faith or trust in me. You know, until he put it in me, and then once he put it in me, you know, how could I let him down? So thank you, Alfie. God bless you. Little Alfie's doing so well for himself. And all the family, you know. Well, fair play, and also nice to chat out to the best. But I'd like to say, um, fair play to you, Tony. You got yourself in great shape again, mm. ready for a next challenge. Constantly putting yourself in in the way of more and more challenges all the time. And I think this is one, obviously, like I said, that you've been raised for, and it's, it's perfect for you, isn't it? On the big stage, no easy fights. Let's go. When I was a kid, I could see it in my head. I believed it in my heart. You know, I, I just had to show the world. I just had to do it then. So this is, for me, there's nothing new. I knew that this was going to happen. I knew what I had at the end of my career was going to be the most intense time, you know? And I've got a few years, I'm 38 today, uh, so I've got a few years left if of if God looks down on me. And in, in them next few years, I am going to now go to the next level of showing everybody Matrix at the most hardest, roughest, Dangerous sport. Did I say dangerous? Is it? <laughs> dangerous sport out today. Well, you know? like I said, obviously wishing you the best of luck, and we're going to be there on the night to support you. And guys, make sure you support him. Get onto Tony's Instagram as well. Add him up. That link will be in description. And uh, yeah, Tony, is there anyone else you'd like to shout? Out? You just shout out Dave Filming and we'll be going. If you have, is there any your team you'd like to shout out? Mm. Family, anyone? There's so many of them, you know. I think I've had to, I've shouted out the main ones at the minute, Perfect. so I can't keep shouting out people and, and leaving other people out. But as I say, I feel like with this interview, I've, right, I've written a few wrongs, you know, so as I say, with the Fury situation, yeah, that hurt me inside because because I put myself in their shoes, you know, and I know what exactly goes, goes through people in the fight world because I've done it myself, especially in the gypsy community because we get brought up all our lives from our first, first breaths and from being babies we get to hear about see fighting that is what it's all about you know you don't have to be the richest to be the best you have to be the roughest to be the best in our culture you know so fair play to tone and I'd like to say a massive thank you again for the opportunity as always all i've got to say is this that i've said it it will happen tony giles 
will be a champion BKFC. I will have that belt. I've got nine already. So we're going up to double figures with this, you know, and I will fight any man they put in front of me. Any man they put in front of me. But I'm not just going to fight. I will win. Just, just give me enough time to train, adapt to their style, and you're going to see, listen, it's all going to happen from the 20th. The Rhino on Mad. And if you don't believe me, ask your mum and dad. It's happening. Fair play. The Rhino's back. August 20th. Look out for it. Nice one. Thank, Thank you, Tony.